Hey everybody, this is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous friends. We are now at part five of our series for crazy days and nights, Blind Item. If you haven't seen the other four or five that were done, please go ahead and check them out. And let's continue on. We're now at June 8th, 2020. And it says, apparently the message the illiterate royal did for her old school was not even asked for, and they have remained silent since it was delivered. I think she might be bored and doesn't seem interested in the drinking nights her husband and the one named A-plus list singer have. And that would be Adele and Prince Harry. Hmm. Okay, let's break this down piece by piece. Notice the date, June 2020. What happened at the end of May? George Floyd. What did Meghan go and do? She decided to give a graduation speech to her immaculate heart. And let's talk about the lie or the major lie that she inserted there to make herself seem relevant to this George Floyd blow up. Always remember to put others' needs above your own fears. And that has stuck with me through my entire life. <laughs> it was the beginning of the me show where this graduation speech was the most depressing thing I've ever heard. And on top of it, she chose to tell a story about Rodney King in which she completely lied. It was the LA riots, which was also triggered by a senseless act of racism. And I remember the curfew, and I remember rushing back home, and on that drive home, seeing ash fall from the sky, and smelling the smoke, and seeing the smoke billow out of buildings, and seeing people run out of buildings carrying bags and looting. And I remember seeing men in the back of a van just holding guns and rifles. And I remember pulling up to the house and seeing the tree that had always been there, completely charred. Liar, liar, pants on fire, crooked as can be. So Thomas Markle goes on record in Tom Bauer's book, Revenge, where he says, Thomas took Megan to Palm Springs when the riots were underway. And there's serious doubts that she saw any violence, not even minor looting. No wonder why the school hasn't talked about it. Moving on to the Adele thing, I think it was just a rumor. Maybe they hung out once or twice. Quite frankly, Adele is not that interesting, so perhaps this was something to keep her in the headlines, as she also has become such a elitist snob. This one named permanent A-list singer in a group and solo is about to land the production deal that the illiterate former actress turned royal wanted, and that was Beyonce and Disney. This is quite simple. And it really just boils down to common sense. One has talent, the other one doesn't. The business is going to go with the one that can make money, not waste it. It remains to be seen if the illiterate former actress turned royal calls out her bully best friend for trying to ruin the career of a woman. The royal would play the victim card if she was on the bullying end and demand something be done. My guess is there will be nothing but crickets because of the upcoming trial. And that was Jessica Mulroney. And this blind item is in relation to social media influencer Sasha Exeter, who had a bit of a spat with Jessica Mulroney, in which Jessica Mulroney exercised her white privilege in threatening this woman from behind the scenes. Now, it's no surprise that Meghan Markle did nothing to support her so-called friend when she started to get an onslaught of people bullying her then. In this Instagram post, Jessica Mulroney writes, People often ask why I delete certain posts. The amount of bullying and hatred I have had to put up with for three years. I'm tired of looking at it. Be kind. Be gracious. We are grown-ups. Stop acting like teenagers. Real women don't put down other women. Well, real women don't bully three-year-old kids. And two days later, after Jessica was canceled in cancel culture, this blind item dropped. The fact the illiterate actress turned royal still has not said anything other than 
through her friend about her best friend speaks volumes. Don't forget, though, the best friend still has to be a witness in the current legal situation in England. And for those that don't know, this is talking about this suing of the Mail on Sunday about the People article. However, this never came to fruition and Jessica Mulroney never had to give any sort of statement or testify. And nevertheless, Jessica Mulroney was Markled and they are no longer friends. Now, this was something that Meghan Markle made a stink about. Apparently, there have been several questions raised about the profits and the copyright of a cookbook organized by the illiterate former actress turned royal for charity. And that was the cookbook that she did for the Hub Community Kitchen called Together. Now, here's a picture of the front of the cookbook. Probably one of the rare instances where Megan's HRH title is listed. And the kicker, the copyright is under the Royal Foundation. and All proceeds go to the Royal Foundation, a.k.a. Kate and William. Interestingly enough, this was the only successful project that Megan executed while she was royal, and she couldn't have done it without the help of the so-called racist institution. This north-of-the-border gossip monger is playing the victim card now? Come on. They have been riding the coattails, real or perceived, for a long time. Now, this is talking about Laney Gossip, which is another gossip site that was traditionally pro-Sussex and Jessica Maroney. So this is Laney Gossip, and I believe the woman running it, Elaine Liu, she is a Canadian. And many of the posts that she has done in the past about Meghan Markle have been quite friendly. Now, it was this picture that surfaced in 2020 showing Meghan Markle at a dinner with Laney Gossip. So many had speculated that the two of them were actually friends. So Lainey Gossip decides to take it upon herself to explain to her readers that they are not friends and they just so happen to be at a dinner at the same time. Now, from what I understand, it appeared that Lainey was leaking information that was part of the Finding Freedom book, which the Daily Mail came to the conclusion that Lainey Gossip was a contributing source to Finding Freedom. So Lainey goes into this diatribe in defending the fact that she doesn't know Meghan Markle and that, you know, her writing had come from this book and that book and trying to make her case of how she doesn't know. And then she mentions the word viper that shows up in Omid Scobie's book, Finding Freedom, and then like starts to explain that, which looking at this rambling, it explains that, yeah, maybe she doesn't know Meghan Markle really well, but she is not giving the full picture of her association with Meghan Markle. You see, it appears that Omid Scobie has a relationship with Lainey Gossip, and they have been, well, it looks like yachting buddies back in the day. So I'm coming to the conclusion that anyone in Meghan Markle's circle cannot be trusted and should be questioned because so far everyone that has either supported her or have represented her have all turned out to be liars and downright deceitful and shady as F. The illiterate former actress turned royal has a friend who knows all about the yachting and trolling for rich husbands because she was doing it too. The two are very good friends. Turns out, though, a divorce is in the works for the friend. And that is talking about Misha Nono, or Nunu, whatever her name is. So this is Misha and her ex-husband, Alexander, who, by the way, if you don't know, was Harry's really good friend. These two married in 2012, and then they divorced in 2017. And within no time, Misha traded up and got herself a billionaire and locked it down in 2019 with one of the heirs to the Hess fortune. It looks like as of today, her and Mikey Hess are still married and they now have two children. Moving on. They tried to make the press release sound positive. But essentially, if your check is big enough, the illiterate former actress turned royal and her husband will speak anywhere to any group. To be honest, I can't pinpoint which one they're talking about because in the month of June 2020, Meghan and Harry jumped on every Black Lives 
matter bandwagon that was out there. So they were photoed here for some bakery, for Homeboy Industries or something like that. I don't even know what that was. Megan allegedly called a biracial woman to talk to her about, you know, loving herself and caring herself after she was set on fire by um, some white men. I mean, it, it was ridiculous how many things that they were doing essentially for PR, but at the same time for it to catch somewhere. And sadly, they didn't follow up with any of these organizations after they did their photo shoot and their uh, alleged charity work. I mean, it's it's cringe because this is what they have been doing for the last four years. Now, we all know that Meghan Markle never bothered to follow up with this girl to see how she's been doing. Now, this blind item is interesting. It says, I had a chance to catch up with an actress who starred on a reboot back in the day when reboots were first becoming a thing. In fact, they kind of made it mainstream. We got to talking about this A-list celebrity who is in the news every day. The actress said that a producer promised the celebrity a reoccurring gig on the show if she slept with him. So, the celebrity did. She did get the recurring role, but it was just two episodes. The celebrity was really upset. The actress said that it happened a lot on the show and that it was not a fun work environment at all. And that was 90210. So this blind item is brutal, but at the same time, it's so funny. So yes, Meghan Markle did have a recurring role, which she's noted in IMDb for being seen twice in two episodes of the 90210 reboot. Now, there were nine producers, and through process of elimination, I have narrowed it down to two. If I had to guess, it would be one of these two that possibly did the dirty deed. What's really comical about this is the role that Meghan Markle was given as Wendy. Now, Wendy was supposed to be the student who was messing around with the main character's boyfriend, but she didn't have any speaking parts. And this is the clip that everybody is aware of, but nobody seems to be aware of the second clip in the episode called The Jet Set. How could you cheat on me? I think I'm so beautiful. Oh, I love LaCrosse. No, 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 you're supposed to love me because you're the only one stupid enough to actually think that I'm interested. So now pay close attention to those puppets or stick figures. I love LaCrosse. Hi, Ethan. Can we go to your car and check out your LaCrosse stick? In case you missed it and your eyes are not deceiving you, that is her on a stick. <laughs> You can't, you just can't make this up. <laughs> so uh, I'm guessing that they have to credit her because they're using her image. <laughs> oh my God, it just, it just gets, it gets better. This is just too much, man. Too much. Okay, back to being serious. This next one says, fans of the illiterate former actress turned royal are sending tips to tabloids which trash the woman who called out the canceled North of the Border stylist host. Yes, that actually did happen, but it does not appear that it was any of the core Sussex squaddies who work with Meghan Markle. These seem to be, like, legitimate fans who went after Sasha Exeter. This illiterate former actress turned royal was about to get her huge first break and get a shot at a main role on a show. Until, that is, the director found out the actress lied to the production team. And that was Meghan Markle lying about having a SAG card. Now, for those that have been watching me for a while, you know that at the end of all my videos, I have Meghan Markle's only real truth. It was such a broad. <laughs> that was from the time that she was telling the story about how she wasn't union and how she got the job by having to lie. Don't believe the hype. The seven figures is what the royal couple would like per speech. But after the lackluster first one they gave, they will probably cap out at very low six figures. Oh, 
And don't forget, the one who is birth royal is not allowed to work in this country. What's interesting about this was that they made a big announcement that they joined the Harry Walker agency, which you have all these big names attached to it. So Bill Clinton, Serena Williams, A-Rod. But just to let you guys know, they never were added to the website. And there is no trace of either Meghan or Harry ever being connected with Harry Walker. So the question now that should be raised is, were they ever even a part of the agency? I don't think so. I think it was just a puff piece to be thrown out there to get their marketability up. Now, this next blind item is interesting. It says, a little bit of a veiled threat is how the news is being taken that the BFF of the illiterate former actress turned royal has been keeping a diary the past couple of years. I would imagine it is going to become a book. Ooh, that's going to be good. And Jessica, if you are secretly listening to my channel by any chance, just know that you have a whole community that will buy this book and support you if you write it. It's not going to excuse you bullying or being a part of the bullying situation with Megan and Charlotte, but we will have a little bit of forgiveness and grace for you. You still need to sort your priorities and not pay so much attention into the materialistic things, but one step at a time. The illiterate former actress turned royal is pleading she be allowed to do an upcoming speech in the same virtual space as the wife of the former A++ lister. She thinks it will be great for her brand. And that is the 2020 Girl Up Leadership Summit with Michelle Obama. Who remembers this shit show? Nobody even remembers what she spoke about. She just was word salading the whole way through. In this speech, she's telling women to use her voice and to step up and talking about gender equality and humanity. And, you know, honestly, nobody remembers anything that she has said or of value because she's such a hypocrite. Now, this one's quite interesting. Dated July 18, 2020. Each time this tabloid calls out the lies or omissions of the former actress turned royal, she plays the victim card. If she thinks what she is going on is bad now, she should read the transcripts of the Johnny Depp trial. If she did, she would settle in a day. She has offered to settle, but wants to make it seem as if she was on the winning side. So, yep, that's true. Because in this court case, the Daily Mail pushed back by this point, poking holes into her story because one minute she's saying one thing and the next minute she's saying something else and it wasn't consistent. Now, they had information that they were not showing her and they were trying to, I don't want to say, get her to incriminate herself, which she ended up doing. Now, at this point in the juncture, in the July 2020 timeframe, she was getting nervous about the five friends having to be called to the witness stand or to give witness statements about this People article. This is before Finding Freedom came out. And as we know, when her story dropped in August of 2020, that's when her story completely f shit the bed, like Amber Heard. This next one says, for lots of reasons, the illiterate former actress turned royal is going to be spending a lot more money on legal costs and not get anything in return. It is a bad case, and a great deal is embellished. And that was the Pat Photo lawsuit. And I believe that was getting a picture of Archie while they were staying at Tyler Perry's home. I believe it was a drone, allegedly. Yeah, they made a big deal about it, and uh, then it sort of just disappeared. Now, this one I actually forgot about. July 25th, 2020. Huh? The illiterate former actress turned royal turned future vagina candle salesperson had the same five friends be the majority of sources for the new book about the royal. Now, I believe that they're talking about finding freedom. At this point for that book, I feel like Megan didn't even have five friends to contribute to it. I believe it was Megan, 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 and Omid. Now, this piggybacks off of the last one. It's very interesting now that we're looking at it. 
It says, despite what she may feel, I think the writer slash host from up north will have her name brought up if there ends up being a trial. You don't think the five friends could decide to throw the host under a bus to make themselves look good? You don't think there is some animosity directed towards the host by a few of the five? And that's the Laney Gossip woman that I was showing you earlier. Now, it, I'll be interested to look back at her archives to see what had been said. There is something funky going on about there. And considering that she knows Omen Scobie, this is interesting. So this is August 13, 2020. It says, The illiterate former actress is being offered about 10% what she thinks she deserves. Apparently, she thinks she deserves former first lady money and is being offered television host money, which is still more she would have received if not for marriage. This was someone who was lucky to get $2,000 for an appearance of four hours. Now, I don't particularly recall if this pertains to anything specific. I do know at that time they were out doing all sorts of stage photo shoots for, you know, giving kids backpacks and, uh, I don't know, going to the schools and planting. Uh, just ridiculous all over the place. However, I did find this article dated... August 1st, 2020, from the New York Post, and I think it's worth a read because it's very relevant to some recent podcasts that we had listened to with a very well-known singer by the name of Mariah Carey. So it begins, before Meghan Markle drove the royal family to distraction, she frustrated co-workers on the Toronto set of Suits. Years before she was the Duchess of Sussex, Markle gained a difficult reputation for holding up filming and photo shoots if everything wasn't perfect or if she wasn't getting enough of the spotlight. She was always having to be coaxed out of her dressing room during promotional shoots because she didn't think she looked pretty enough or her outfit wasn't right or she felt she wasn't getting prominent enough placement. A source on the set told the Post while citing, there were always tears every time. Oh, jeez. Like, how the hell did Marco last seven seasons on this show if she's such a diva? Like, I just don't understand how anyone could work with her for that long and endure such behavior. It then continues, our source's information jibes with an earlier report from the Daily Mail in which a videographer was warned. People told me, get ready, because she is a lot. They used to call her princess. When I saw her right away from the moment she arrived, I didn't even know who she was, and she was acting like a diva. It was the attitude, how she talked to people, the rules. The videographer continued. She came in wearing a baseball cap, hiding her face, and she had her head down and just walked back towards the makeup room. It was like it was the big diva coming in, and she doesn't want people to see her, like you would do if you're walking in the street and you don't want the paparazzi to take your picture. Oh, my God, horrendous. The videographer wasn't impressed, telling the Daily Mail, everyone thought she's acting like an A-lister when she's not even a D-lister. <laughs> oh, brutal. What I don't understand is why didn't anybody speak up when they saw Samantha being attacked so viciously for telling the truth? Like, this should have been a public service announcement broadcasted globally. And we're going to end on this one. August 15, 2020. This YouTube star has learned the hard way that shining a light onto the goings-on of the family overseas and the breakaway couple here can bring danger. Two homes, both set on fire via arson. And that was Danger Zone. I sure do miss Ashley, and I hope that she is at peace and watching over us and keeping us blessed and safe from these two, considering of how evil and dangerous they are. Mark my words. One way or another, it's all going to come back around to bite those who did spitefully try to harm others. And part of the reason why I do this is because of the good people that were affected, such as Ashley. So we keep her spirit alive in the work that we do and 
we will continue to keep fighting and making sure that the evil gets put in their place. So please continue to share this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button. And I will be back soon with more content. Thanks, everyone. Bye. It was such a fraud. <laughs>